Hello there students, welcome, and today we are talking about the Circle of Fifths, and three main things we're talking about the Circle of Fifths is one, what is it, and how to read it, two is how can it help you as a music student, and lastly we're going to talk about a special technique that you can use to get your key signatures right every single time, so you don't even need to look at the Circle of Fifths. So let's get started. Hey there students, piano teacher Tim here again, and we are in front of the Circle of Fifths today, so I'm going to explain what the Circle of Fifths is all about. But before I start on that, the most important thing to remember is that the Circle of Fifths is really a visual tool if you don't know your key signatures. What I'm going to teach you today is basically is how to know your key signatures by heart, so you no longer need to look at the Circle of Fifths. But even saying that, there, that being said, let's talk about you know how to look at a, a circle of fifths and understand what it's talking about so like i said the circle of fifths is a visual tool it tells you all of the major and minor key names along with how many sharps or flat they have and also what sharps or flat they have remember that a key tells you what notes are sharp or flat within a song an example a scale or something like that not only does it tell you that, it also tells you what the tonal center is. So the uh, thing is, is, if we're in C major, you play a C major scale, the scale is based around C. It starts on C, ends on C. If you have a song in C major, it doesn't have to begin and end on C all the time. But for the most part, the notes are centered around C or D or whatever key you happen to be in. So I'm going to teach you how to read the circle of fifths now. So this is how it works. So you can see it here. We have, it says major keys, right? And it says C in pink. And then going to the right, you have G, D, A, E, B. And then it starts listing two of them. There's one key on the inside. As you can see, it correlates to this key right here. So B is right there. C flat is on the outside. So just to save space, they kind of do that and overlap. Well, also because these keys are equivalents as well, to be exact. So anyway, you go further to the right. Now, I guess heading over to the left, you have F sharp in the bottom middle, and then D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, and F. Going around in the major keys, going from zero sharps and flats, you know, to one sharp, two sharps, three sharps, and so forth. If you go on the inside little circle, you have your minor keys all the way around again. So basically what you do is you say, all right, what key am I in? Well, you want to ask yourself how many sharps are flats, right? So if you have zero sharps, zero flats, you go there where there's nothing written. And then you say, okay, it's either C major or A minor. Remember that every key has a major and minor equivalent to it. So zero sharps, zero flats has C and A. If you go over to one sharp, you're going to have G major and also E minor has one sharp as well. And then if you look at the note that is sharped, you know, for that first sharp, if you had a note right there, that would be F, right? So that's telling you every F in the entire piece or song, unless they tell you otherwise, is going to be sharped. So how about we do this? You can also do it the other way around. Say somebody says, let's play in the key of A flat. Well, what do you do? Well, if you have the circle of fifths in front of you, you go to where it says A flat. And then you just go to the key signature designated for that little square on the circle. And that tells you that A flat has one, two, three, four flats. And these flats are B, E, A, and D. Now I'm going to teach you more about how to do that. I mean, you can just kind of read what notes they would be if they were on those uh, parts of the staff. Now to explain why it's called the circle of fifths, why it gets its name. So if you remember from the circle of fifths, There'll be something up above to show you that the key of C had zero sharps and zero flats. And the next key with one sharp was G. And then going around the circle, the next one's D. The next one's A. The next one's E. Well, hey, there's a pattern of how these go, uh, these relationships between these keys go up for one another. You have C major, right? You have eight notes in C major. Going from C to G, one, two, three, four, five, is five notes. Well, what is five notes up the C major scale? One, two, three, four, five is G, right? Well, hey, that's the next one in our 
circle of fifths. G had one sharp, F sharp. The next key with two sharps, and this is a little trick you can use as well to know your key signatures, you go five more. One, two, three, four, five. So the one with two sharps is D major. What's the one with three sharps? Well, you go up five in the D major scale. One, two, three, four, five. And hey, A had three sharps. So it's called the circle of fifths, literally because the uh, relationship between each of the keys is up a fifth. The same thing goes with the minor keys, except that you start on A first. So A is the first one. You go up five, one, two, three, four, five. E is the next minor key with one sharp. You go up five again, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and hey, and B is the uh, next one with two sharps. Now, as you keep going, you have to be really careful. So say we are at B minor, right? The one we just talked about with two sharps. Now you have to be careful because when you go up one, two, three, four, five, you have to be careful because it's actually going to be F sharp instead of regular B. Well, now why is that? Well, it's because it has to be what's called a perfect fifth. So you can make sure it's a perfect fifth by doing this. The distance between this note and this note in half steps or what we call semitones is, which is counting every note in between, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you count up seven semitones, not including the note you just played, you will get to the correct key every time. So that's where the name circle of fifths comes in. So now we're going to talk about how the circle of fifths can help you as a music student. Why learn the circle of fifths and why learn the secret technique on getting around the circle of fifths and knowing your key signatures. So basically it boils down to why know your key signatures. Well, you have to understand your keys because that's really the layout like I talked about earlier. You know, keys tell you what note sh notes are sharp or flat in a song or example, but it also tells you what the tonal center is. So by understanding your keys and what notes they have sharp or flat, you really have a much better idea on the music you're playing. You have a much better idea on the music you compose. You'll be able to do actually quite a few different things with it, which we'll talk about here in a second. And one of those other things is how to improvise, right? So if you're improvising in the key of C, like that, just a short little example there, nothing special. But I, I was able to do that because I know that the key of C starts on C and I know what chords are associated with that. I know that I'm not gonna be running into any sharps or flats. So I have a good understanding on the key of C. So. If somebody said, let's play something in the key of G, well, and I had to improvise there, I could go here. By knowing the key of G, I knew that there was an F sharp there, so I could play the key properly, because if you don't have the correct sharps or flats, and you're not starting on the right, what we call tonal center, your song is not going to sound correct. And uh, like I said, just knowing your keys gives you a much better understanding on how music works. And one of the things I mentioned in this lesson a bunch of times already is it helps you play with other people. So if somebody in a band you're playing with says, let's play something in the key of E, you'll know exactly what they're talking about. Of course, you would want to ask either E major or E minor because they're both different. But you know, if something is in the key of E major, you'll know what notes to play and where to play them and you'll be a much valued band member okay so here's the breakdown of learning your keys this is the shortcut that i alluded to in the beginning of the lesson that will get you understanding the circle of fifths get you understanding your keys in a very short time it does take a little bit of thinking to get through but here it goes the first step to getting this right is you have to memorize what they call the order sharps which is F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. And then you have to memorize your order of flats, which is B, E, A, D, G, C, and F.
So F, C, G, D, A, E, B is what we call the order of sharps. The order of flats is B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Now what is the, how are these two related? Well, think about it and pause the video if you need to think about it, but they are inverses of each other. So if you have F, C, G, D, A, E, B, and you flip it around backwards, and say it backwards, it's B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So they're in reverse of one another. Now, just like when you're learning how to read music, I suggest you come up with some kind of saying to memorize these, like especially the F, C, G, D, A, E, B, because you know, it could be hard to remember. If you're having trouble remembering it, come up with a sentence, like with the first letter of each word going along with one of these letters. So maybe like fat, somebody told me one time, fat children gather daily at every basketball game. So F, C, G, D, A, E, B, and that's how they remember. They were a younger student. And then for me, bead, G, C, F, is spells bead, and then G, C, F is like greatest common factor. If you've taken uh, mathematics, then you learn that fairly early on, but there could be some viewers that uh, aren't familiar with that. So you may want to come up with a saying of your own to memorize these. So what I want to know is try to come up with a saying of your own, and I want to hear about it and see it in the comments so we can really share it together because I don't really have any for these because I know them so well. So if you could come up with some really good ones, I would love to hear them. Okay, so now we have the circle of fists back out in front of us, and I'm going to teach you how to use our order of sharps, which I wrote right here, and our order of flats, which I wrote right below it, right here, on how to figure these key signatures out. So I want to tell you first what the order of sharps actually means. The order of sharps is the order in which you add your sharps. So what do I mean by that? Well, say we have one sharp. What well, you do is you go to your first one in your order of sharps. And what note is that? That's F, right? Well, take a look here at the picture we have. If you go to one sharp, the key with one sharp, the sharp it has is F. So the order of sharps, like I said, tells you the order in which you add them. Going to two sharps, you have, you actually have the first one, and then you have you know, the one before it plus a new one. So you have F now and C. So if you go to the one with two sharps, sure enough, it has those two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. If you have the one with three sharps, <clears throat> it now has F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp because you're adding them, you know, in the order of the sharps. If you had the one with all seven sharps, The seven sharps that that song or example would have that key has is F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And those are the order in which you add them. The flats work the same way pretty much. And by the way, the flats go the opposite direction. They go around to the left. If you want to go in the sharps, you go to the right. Uh, flats are to the left. So now we have the one with one flat. So you're going to go to your order flats and say, okay, which one do we have? Well, that one's going to be B, right? Well, take a look at the key signature with one flat. It has a B flat. If you have the one with two flats, you have the one before plus a new one. So now we have B flat and E flat. And then if you had the one with all flats, it would be the entire thing. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So now that I've explained the order sharps and the order flats, I'm going to tell you how to use these to figure out the key name. One thing I want to tell you is that the key name is often, not all the time, but often different than what notes are sharped or flat in that key. So for instance, the key of D doesn't have a D sharp in it. It has a regular D in it. it. Actually, the two sharps are different, F sharp and C sharp. So that's one thing you really want to get through your mind is that the name of the key is different from the sharps and flats in that key themselves, except sometimes, like the key of A flat actually has an A flat in it. So here we go. The method is different for the sharps 
and the flats. Here is the method for the sharps. Now I'm going to show you the technique where you can memorize your key signatures so you don't even need to look at the circle of fifths. But you really do need to, like I mentioned before, memorize your order of sharps and your order of flats for this to work. And it will take some practice to get this right, but once you practice it for a few weeks, you should be able to nail it first time, first try. So here we go. So our order of sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, B, as we can see you know, right over here, <clears throat> right there. So the tip is, it's different for sharps or flats, but here is the tip for sharps, the technique to use. So what you do is, remember the order sharps is the order in which you add the sharps. So if you have a key signature with two sharps, you have the first two, F and C. So here we go, what you do is you go to the sharp all the way to the right, so the very last sharp you'll say. So if you only have one sharp, F, that's gonna be the sharp you're looking at. So just say we have one with one sharp, F, right? So because we're talking about sharps, you're gonna go to F sharp on the piano. Now you don't have to play it, but just keep in mind where it is. And then you, what you do is you go up a half step to G. And hey, let's take a look at the circle of fifths and check to make sure our answer is correct. Well, hey, look, there's G, there's one sharp, and that one sharp is F sharp, the one that we had down here. Let's see if this works for other key signatures with the sharp. So what you do is let's say we have three sharps, right? The three sharps we're gonna have are the first three in our order of sharps, F, C, and G. Well, What's our last sharp? You go to the one all the way to the right. The last one you say, well, it's G, right? And if we're talking about sharps, what you do is you play G sharp or you find it on the piano or in your mind. And then the second step to this is go up a half step and that gives you your answer. So remember the goal here, before we were talking about what sharps are in the key and that's what the order of sharps is about. Now this is all about the key name. So the key we're talking about is going to be A. So let's look at our circle of fifths. Here's A right here, right? And hey, three sharps right here, F, C, and the last one is G, the exact same one we pointed out at the end there. Let's practice some more. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say that we have five sharps, right? So how do we figure out what five sharps we have? Well, the answer is we say the first five in our order of sharps, F, C, G, D, F, C, G, D, and A. So I'll highlight them there. And then what's our last sharp? Well, let's take a look. Our last sharp is gonna be A, right? So what you do is you go to A sharp and you play it or find it on the piano and then you go up a half step. So our answer is B and let's take a look down here at B. Remember the circle of fifths, we're looking on the inside one, so we're comparing B right here to this one right here. Oh, and hey, B had five sharps, F, C, G, D, A, F, C, G, D, and A. Yep, that's the five. I always wanna say an extra one by accident. But, so that's how you do it. So remember step one, just to go over it again, is determine how many sharps you have. So if you have three sharps, then you determine what three sharps you have. So you go to your order of sharps, you say the first three, F, C, and G. You take the very last sharp you said, G sharp, right? And you play G sharp on the piano or you think about where it is. And then you go up a half step and there's A. So if we were to check our circle of fifths, let me erase all this. Remember we're three sharps in, right there, F, C, and G. So you go to G sharp, up a half step to A, there's A, and hey, A has the three sharps that we're talking about. So remember, you say how many sharps you have, you take the last one, you sharp that, and you play that on the piano or think about where it is, and then you go up a half step, and that's it for sharps. If practice this every day for maybe two weeks, and I think you'll probably have it. If you have any you know, problems with it, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Okay, now we're gonna talk about flats. Now flats works a little differently. The first thing I wanna tell you is it only works if you have two or more flats. 
So what you're going to have to do is just memorize that the key with one flat is F. Just memorize that in your brain. One flat is F, right? And it works the same way because, the in a similar way rather, because we have our order of flats, right? The order of flats is the order in which we add the flats to the key signature. So the one with one flat is B, you know, right here. The second one is E, third one's A, and so forth. But this time it works a little different. So remember, the one with one flat is going to be what key? It's going to be F because <clears throat> you just had to memorize that one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the one with two flats. Well, what two flats we're going to have? Or are we going to have? So it starts the same way as your order sharp. So our two flats are B and E, which I've highlighted on the side there. So what you do is you take the next to last flat. That's why it only works with two or more flats. So you don't take the very last one like we did before, the one all the way to the right. You go to the one right to that. And then in this case, this happens to be B, right? So we have B, B flat and E flat. You go to B and we're talking about flat. So it's going to be B flat. Let me write this in here for us. B flat. And guess what? you don't have to move at all. So it's not like sharps where you had to move up a half step. If you just play the next to last flat that you had, that is your answer right there. Let me move that up a little bit. So we have B flat has two flats, B flat and E flat. Let's check the circle of fifths to make sure we are correct. So here is B flat on our circle of fifths. And hey, it has two flats, B flat and E flat, just like we said. Let's try another one. Okay, so now we're going to try one with four flats. Remember, step one is to determine what four flats we have. Well, it's the first four in your order of flats, B, E, A, and D. Those are the four flats that we have. What's the next step? Take the last flat? No, remember, that's with the sharps. You go to the next to last one. So our last one's D, and the one right before that is going to be A, which I'll draw that green arrow towards. And guess what? All you got to do, because we're talking about flats, you want to make it A flat. You play A flat or you say A flat, A flat. And that's your answer. A flat is the answer. A flat is the key with four flats. And it has the flats of B, E, A, and D. Let's check it out. So we go here on the circle of fifths. There's A flat. Oh, hey. And there are the flats right there. B, E, A, and D. It matches up perfectly. So when you first practice this, do it like I'm doing, where you are trying to determine the answer first. You know, know your order sharps, order flats, and then go to the circle of fifths and double check to make sure you have the right answer. So to go over it again for the flats, remember step one is determine how many flats you have. And then step two is go to the next to last flat and make that a flat. You know, so if you have five flats, B, E, A, D, and G, well, the one right before the end was D, right? And you just play D flat, and that's the name of the key you're in. Remember this, I want to say this again, don't confuse the, the amount of sharps and amount of flats with, or what sharps and flats you have in the key signature with the actual key name. The key name is different. So we have, if we have five flats, that's going to be the key of D flat, and it does have a D flat in it, but this is all about determining the name of the key. Let's try one last one. Okay, now let's say that we have all the flats, right? We have one with seven flats. Well, what flats are we going to have? We're going to have B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. So now what do you do? Well, you go to the next to last one, which happened to be C, right? Well, what do you have to do now? All you have to do is play C flat. And that's your answer. So the key of C flat, let's find it on the circle of fifths. It's right here. Here you go. There's. Uh, it's going to look strange because it's green on green, but there you go. You got C flat. And remember that if it's on the outer edge of the circle, you're talking about this key signature right here. Oh, and hey, and that has seven flats. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So it has the entire order of flats because that's the maximum amount of flats you have. So that concludes the special technique on figuring out what key you are in, the name of the key, not the sharps or the flats. That had to do with the order sharps and order flats. They are related, but just remember that sometimes the key name, like the key of A, going back to the sharps, 
It doesn't even have an A sharp in it, so you just have to be careful of that. So that concludes the technique. Let's move on to the next section. Okay, students, it's quiz time once again. Are you ready? Well, I have four questions here for you today. The first question is, what is your order of sharps? Question number two is, what is your order of flats? The third question, now a really important one, is what is the trick to figuring out what key you're in if it's a sharp key signature? And the last question is, what is the trick to figuring out what key you're in if you're talking about a flat key signature? So those are all the questions we have for today. If you're able to answer them just fine, I'll give you the answers here in a second. Then you understand, well, basically what this whole lesson's about. If you got any of them wrong, I really suggest you watch the lesson, uh, at least parts of the lesson, a few times over again, just to make sure you have everything out of this lesson, because there is a lot, obviously, that is covered. So I want to say thanks, as always, for watching. Remember to leave a thumbs up if you thought you learned something from this lesson. And one main thing I want to tell you about is to subscribe to the free newsletter. There will be a link down in the description. It's totally free. You'll get two lessons a month, well, two newsletters a month with exclusive lessons in them that you won't see anywhere else, as well as some other great information about what's coming out with lessons on the web. And the very last thing I want to tell you about is I have a music theory course over on my website, LessonsOnTheWeb.com which can help you review your key signatures, your circle of fifths, everything you need to know, plus a ton of others. You're even going to learn how to write simple songs and really put this stuff together. So it's been You Know Who from You Know Where, Tim from Lessons on the Web. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Thank you so much.